Bookmarks is one of the greatest features of Visual Studio that is unfortunately hardly ever used. Basically, you put bookmarks in various parts of the code to remind you that you need to get back there and do something. This is often very useful when you're focusing on a task, but you see a problem somewhere else in the code. You don't want to get distracted from the original task at hand. So you just leave a bookmark there and get back to your original task. Later, you can look at all your bookmarks and get back to do whatever you wanted to do. Let's see this in action. Imagine you're in the middle of a task and you spot something here in method one. You don't want to get distracted. So you leave a bookmark here by pressing Ctrl and K twice. Note this little icon here. This represents a bookmark. To see all your bookmarks, press Ctrl and W as in short for window, and then B as in short for bookmark. Note that the bookmark I just created is listed here. You can double click it and change its name to something more meaningful, like requires refactoring. I know what you're thinking. You're probably saying, Mosh, didn't you advise me not to use the mouse while programming? Yes, I did say that. To be honest with you, at the time of recording this video, I don't know a way to rename a bookmark without using the mouse. Hopefully, one day when I figure it out, I will update this video and teach you and everyone else how to do it. Note that you can remove a bookmark by selecting it here and then clicking the delete icon here. But you can also remove it in the code. Position the cursor on the line where you have a bookmark and then press Ctrl K twice. Code snippets are one of the coolest features of Visual Studio that can speed up your coding a lot. Let's see this in action. Here I've got a class called Code Snippet Examples. Let's say we want to create a constructor for this class. Most developers do it this way. Here is a faster way of doing that using a code snippet. Did you see how faster it is? So how does this work? There are certain reserved keywords that you can use to automatically insert a ready-made code snippet into your code. In this case, I use the keyword CTOR as in short for constructor and then press the tab. Let's try again. I didn't have to manually type the name of a class for the constructor method. All I typed was CTOR. It's very easy. Now let's create an auto-implemented property here called first name. This is how developers who don't use code snippets do this. You can do this faster using a code snippet. Just type prop and then press the tab. Note that the type is highlighted. It's ready for you to specify the data type of this property. We type in string and then press the tab again. Now the focus is on the name of the property. Let's give it a name. As you see, some code snippets require parameters. In this case, the name and type of a property are the parameters that we have to manually specify. With the last example for a constructor, we didn't have to specify any parameters. When you need to specify parameters, you hit the tab to move to the next parameter. Here is another code snippet. If you need to create a property with full get and set methods, you type in prop full. Note that Visual Studio created a private field and a public property here. Here is another example. Let's say we want to type console.writeline in the constructor here. We can do so by typing CW as in short for console.writeline and then press the tab. There you go. Isn't that great? Here is another one. Let's say in this class we would like to implement the equals method. We can do this by typing equals and pressing the tab. There you go. Visual Studio created two methods for us, equals and get hash code. 
you can go ahead and customize these methods according to your needs. Here is another useful one. To create a try catch block, use try, like this. Or you can use try f if you want to create a try finally block. Another useful code snippet is for. Let's try it. Or we can use for r for a for loop that decrements the loop variable after each iteration. Here is another useful one. Let's create a list of strings and call it names. Let's say we want to iterate over this list using a for each block. So we type in for each and press tab. Because I created the for each block near the names variable, Visual Studio detected that I may want to iterate over this collection. So I don't have to manually specify the name of the collection or the loop variable. Just press tab to commit the code snippet. You can also use while or do code snippets for loops. Let's try it. Here I've got a piece of code that is not properly formatted as you see. We can go ahead and clean it up a little like this. So we select these few lines here and then press the tab key to move them one tab stop to the right. Or we can press shift and tab to move them one tab stop to the left. There is also a faster and better way to clean up this code. You can select everything here using Ctrl and A, and then press Ctrl K, and then Ctrl F. It automatically formats the entire selection. It's a very useful shortcut to know, and I use it all the time. But let me show you even a faster and easier way to clean up your code. Let me revert back the code to its original dirty state first. Note these few namespaces here. As you see, they are not used. That's why they're grayed out. Also, the code is not formatted properly. I can fix all of these issues with only one shortcut, Ctrl and S, which is for saving the file. See what happened? All those unused namespaces are removed and my code is perfectly formatted. So how did this happen? This is because I've installed an extension to Visual Studio that is called Productivity Power Tools. To get Productivity Power Tools, Open up your browser and search for Productivity Power Tools in Google. You'll find this page on Visual Studio Gallery. Click the download button here. This will download a VSIX file, which is basically an extension to Visual Studio. Just double click it and it will install automatically. It's very easy. You may have to restart Visual Studio after installation. Once you got the Productivity Power Tools, then go to Tools, and then Options. Here, select Productivity Power Tools, and then Power Commands General. Note these two checkboxes here. Format Document on Save, and Remove and Sort Usings on Save. By enabling these options, your code is automatically cleaned up every time you save it. I think they are enabled by default anyway, but it's worth double checking. Here I've got a few tabs open. As you see, program.cs is the active tab. Let's say we want to open sample.cs tab. I've seen a lot of developers use the mouse to change tabs here. But again, as a programmer, you should rely on your keyboard. The less you switch between the keyboard and the mouse, the faster you'll be at coding. So how can we switch to sample.cs tab here without touching the mouse? Just press Ctrl and Tab to cycle through the open windows. Like this. 
or you can press Ctrl, Shift and Tab to go backward. Here is another way to do this. You can press Ctrl and F6 to go to the next tab. Or Ctrl, Shift and F6 to go to the previous tab. Isn't that great? It's much easier and faster than using the mouse. Now let's look at some ways to close tabs. If you want to close the current tab, press Ctrl and F4. It's gone. See? Let me share another technique with you that's going to increase your productivity significantly. When I work, I always focus on only one task at a time. Each task is a small piece of work that I can finish within 40 minutes or less. That usually requires very few files or tabs to have open in Visual Studio. There are a couple of great benefits to this. First, it helps you get focus by reducing distractions. You should only have the files open that you really need to work on. The second benefit is that it makes it easier to switch between tabs. Imagine if you had 10 or more tabs open here. Every time you press Ctrl and Tab, you see lots of items to cycle through. This wastes a lot of time and energy. So I highly recommend you to have only very few tabs open that you really need. After you finish each task, clean up your workspace by closing all the open tabs. A fast way to do this is to press Alt, W, and L. Now you may ask, how can I open files for my next task without going to Solution Explorer? The answer is to press Ctrl and Coma. This brings up the Navigate dialog, which is extremely helpful. With this dialog, you can type the name of a file, a class, or even a method, and quickly open that in Visual Studio. There is no need to grab the mouse and open the file by Solution Explorer. Let me type method2 here. As you see, it shows all the places where I have a method by the name of method2. Now we can hit the Tab key to move focus to the results and then use up and down arrows to select an item. Then we press Enter and there you go. Visual Studio opened the file and even put the cursor right at the beginning of the method. Let's open the Navigate dialog again. So I press Ctrl and Coma. But this time I type Program. As you see, we have two items in the results. The first one represents the class, while the second one represents the actual file. Isn't that great? Imagine how much time you would waste if you had to use the mouse to expand and collapse folders in the Solution Explorer to find a file. Especially the larger your project, the harder it gets to find a file in Solution Explorer. As you saw, if you know the name of a file, it's much faster to look it up here. So next time you switch the mouse to open a file via Solution Explorer or close a tab, remember that you can do the same with keyboard and save yourself lots of time. And here's one more trick for this lecture. You're gonna love this. Press Shift, Alt, and Enter. This takes you to the full screen view of the current tab. It's much easier to focus on this tab without any distractions. To exit the full screen view, just use the same shortcut. Shift, Alt, and Enter. Sometimes, when you are dealing with long blocks of code, it's better to collapse the blocks you are not interested in so you can focus on a small part of the code. Take a look at this code. Let's say we want to work on method 1. As you see, method 2 is a long method and is distracting. We can put our cursor anywhere in the method or on the declaration line and press Ctrl and M twice. See what happened? It's much easier to focus on method 1 now. Later, if you want to expand method 2, you can use the same shortcut to expand it. Like this. Note that you can apply this shortcut at any level. For example, we can put the cursor here near the declaration of the class and collapse the entire class. Or even the namespace. Let's say in this class we would like to create a private field of type code inspector and initialize it from the constructor. Typically, 
This is how most developers write this code without using ReSharper. Okay, now let's see the ReSharper way. So we just declare the private field first. Okay, now note this blue underline here. Whenever ReSharper sees something in your code that can be improved, it underlines it like that. If you put the cursor here, where the underline is, we also get this icon on the left side. A yellow bulb is like a warning. In this case, because we declared this private field but never used it or initialized it, ReSharper is wondering why we need this in the first place. Maybe something is missing. So, so at this point, we can activate ReSharper's commands using Alt and Enter. This is what I call a golden shortcut. You're going to see me using this shortcut over and over and over. All right, so now let's take a look at what we can do with this. ReSharper is suggesting three things we can do to improve this code. We can initialize it from the constructor. We can remove it because it's not used anywhere, or we can comment it out. In this case, we want to initialize this from the constructor. So let's select the first item. There you go. So our private field is initialized from the constructor. This is much faster than manually writing this code. We could also write this code by starting from the constructor first and then having ReSharper create and initialize a private field for us. Let me show you how it works. First, we create a constructor using the CTOR code snippet. Remember this? I told you this in the code snippets lecture. Okay, now we define an argument for this constructor. We just type CI, as in short for code inspector. This is the camel humps that I told you earlier. Then control and space for ReSharper to suggest the name. And now Alt and Enter to activate the refactoring commands and select the first one. When you do this a few times, you're gonna get really fast at it and you will do it without even thinking about it. Let me show you how I do this. 